Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's Brood. Mama and the two girls were preparing for some sort of festive occasion in the Bloom home. Let's find out what it's all about. How many places, Ma? Uh, set places for 11, Sarah. Eight I invited and 11 are coming. If you invited eight, how can you figure 11 are coming? Eight I invited and me is nine. But Mrs. Mandelbaum always brings her sister. And her sister always brings her sister-in-law. That makes 11. Well, I don't see what you want to go to all that fuss for. It's an awful lot of trouble, isn't it? Sure, giving a party's a lot of trouble. Why do you do it, then? Your papa's sister, Minnie, is visiting me. And unless I go to a lot of trouble, she won't think I enjoy having her. Besides, Mrs. Levine gave a lunch, so I got to pay her back. Yes? And Mrs. Horowitz gave an evening at home. Very stylish, with five kinds of cake. Four she baked, one she bought. Well, who else? Mrs. Heisig's and her sister I got to have. Why? I don't like them. I don't like them either, but papa does business with them. They're customers. Yeah, go ahead. Birdie Rosine is giving up bridge at the temple next Wednesday, and she invited me. I wouldn't play bridge with her. She cheats. Not very much. She only figured out that if she takes a little look at your hand, it's, it's better than a finesse. The rest I have to have sooner or later, so I might as well get it over with. Besides, I want they should take your Aunt Minnie out, and if I give them a party, they got to take her out. Oh, it's a lot of trouble getting out the new china and the new silverware. Well, don't forget the good napkins, huh? Oh, that's more trouble. Everything's a lot of trouble, but what can you do? If you want to be a society lady, you've got to have trouble. Did you get fresh cards? I got two decks, one for each table. You have to have two decks for each table. They're going to have two decks, one clean deck and one deck that was used before. Have you got enough food? <laughs> yes, uh, I got enough food for 20. The minute I heard Mrs. Mandelbaum was coming, I bought three more chickens. Is she such a big eater? Mm, she'll eat out of the house and kitchen. <laughs> She's so thin, I wouldn't imagine she'd eat much. Well, you never can tell by the size of the store how much business they do. <laughs> Mrs. Mandelbaum eats so much, it keeps her tin undigesting it. You know, I want everything to be very swell today. Mrs. Fink is coming. And since her husband opened up another store... <laughs> You think she's Mrs. Hester? In what way? In every way. I was never so sick of a poison in my life as I was with Mrs. Fink. I can't stand her. You can't? No. Last week at Mrs. Epstein, she bragged and bragged and bragged. Oh, yeah, I thought I'd go crazy. Well, then why are you having her? I have to have her. Well, why do you have to have her? If I don't have her, everybody will think I invited her and she didn't come. Is she so rich? She's very rich. It's unbelievable. Well, then I'm surprised she does come. It seems to me if she's so rich, she'd go with richer people. Mm, she couldn't do that. She'd have nobody to brag to. But she'll get over it. Everybody gets crazy sometimes. Say, when her son Hyman made the speech in school, for two weeks you couldn't talk to her. And then one day he was caught cheating at his examinations. <laughs> then she was all right. I forgot. Remind me of something, will you? Remind you of what? Remind me to call Papa when they leave. Why? Well, your Papa don't like parties. So every time I have a party, he stays in the store until I call him and give him the signal that everybody's gone. And then he comes home. But why? Why? Papa says women talk too much. I think men talk just as much as women. Yeah. Sure they do. Maybe more. But about different things. A man talks about business, about pinochle. That's all right. That's not talk. <laughs> but the minute a woman mentions a word about something else, then she talks too much. What time are they coming? Well, I'd like to get started at 2. 
So I told them one. So they'll be here at two. All except Mrs. Mandelbaum, who'll be here at 12.30 so she can eat more. And Mrs. Fink, who come early so she can brag longer. Well, Ma, why don't you start getting dressed, huh? I've got plenty of time yet. It don't take me so long. Am I an actress? No, but I know how long it takes you to do your hair. Why don't you have your hair bobbed, Mother? For me, bobbed hair's no good. Well, your friend Mrs. Horowitz has got bobbed hair. My friend Mrs. Klein has got tonsils. Is that any sign I should have them? Well, how can you tell you won't look good in bobbed hair? It may be very becoming. Uh -huh. And if it ain't becoming, can I glue it on again? Well, go and get dressed, Ma. Yeah, wear your new black dress, and for goodness sake, Ma, put on your high heel shoes. Yes. You know, Yetta, I was just wondering, how did I ever get dressed before you was old enough to tell me what to wear? <laughs> there. Doesn't the table look nice? Mm-hmm. Smells just like in a movie. Oh, you should have candles. Everybody eats by candlelight. Yes, it's very smart. I don't like candles. Oh, why don't you like candles? Candles was all right before we had electricity. Well, it's a style. It's a funny style. When electricity was invented, the style was to have electricity. And whoever had candles or gas was old-fashioned. <laughs> now that everybody's got electricity, suddenly it's stylish to have candles. Well, is there anything else? Yeah. Go in the bathroom and take down all the towels and put up the littlest guest towels with the biggest initials. Where are they? Oh, I know where they are. I'll put them up. Uh, the last party, the worst thing happened. One lady used one of the guest towels. She wiped her hands on it. Well, what do you hang them there for if you don't want them used? I'm surprised at you, Sarah. Guest towels ain't to be used. They're to be looked at. Well, what are they supposed to wipe their hands on? Darling, you're hanging back like accidentally. A plain towel. They'll use that. Did you say two tables of bridge? Yeah, darling. Uh, go next door to the back van, borrow from Mrs. Fien our bridge table. Oh, I'm ashamed to ask her, Ma. Why are you ashamed? Last week she borrowed the carpet sweeper. The week before last, a quarter pound butter, which I never did get back. She did? Yeah, yeah. And week before that, she borrowed from me a quart grade A milk, and she brought me back a quart grade B. Oh, all right. I'll go and get it. What are you going to play for, Ma? A tenth of a cent? No, no. We play 25 cents our corner with prizes. Sarah... Look and see on the bottom from the prizes and see if I didn't forget to scratch off the prices. How many prizes have you got? Three. One for each table and one for your Aunt Minnie. What are the prizes? Well, for your Aunt Minnie, I got it a sewing set. How did you know Aunt Minnie won the sewing set? She told me so. And she was so afraid I'd get the wrong kind that she went along with me and picked it out. What else? Well, one prize is a fancy vase, very pretty, $1.79. It looks like $5. And the other is such kind of a little thing with... Well, it's got brushes in it. What are the brushes for? I don't know, but they look very Here's fancy. Here's the table. Where shall I put it? Uh, put it in the closet with ours, and then it'll look like they both belong to us. Ma, you better start getting the dress right away. It's five minutes after one, and somebody's able to show up in any minute. It'll take me a few minutes. Oh, go ahead, Ma. Get started. We'll take care of everything. All right, all right, but don't forget that. Well, don't that. worry. Just We're... get dressed. We really should have flowers. I don't see why Ma didn't buy some. Oh, don't say anything. I was supposed to buy them and I forgot. Well, why didn't you tell me? I'd have remembered. Oh, you forget plenty of things, too. Well, now, don't let's stand here. Let's, let's hurry and finish these last few things before somebody does come. <gasps> you answer it. Oh, no, you. I'm busy. Oh, well, I'm busy, too. Somebody's ringing up the door. All right, I'll answer it. Well, I'll bet that's Mrs. Mendelbaum. Well, go ahead and answer it. You told Ma you would. All right. Oh, hello, Mrs. Fink. Hello, Yvette. Hello, Mrs. Fink. Hello, Sally. I guess I'm a little oily, but my chauffeur had to take my car down to have new seat cushions put on my upholstery. You don't say. You know, when you've got such an expensive upholstery, like in my car, you have to cover it up. Not that we couldn't afford new upholstery if we wanted to, but my Seymour wants it covered up. Oh, of course. Oh, how nice you have the table set. I always say to my mates, if the table is set beautifully, people don't pay much attention to what you serve them. Not that we don't serve them the best. Of course, I know it's so easy for my table to look good because I have nothing but the finest china with solid gold edges. And my silverware, would you believe it? It's an exact copy, not an imitation of the finest silverware you'll find in the homes on Fifth Avenue. Is that so? Of course, I don't like to mention what things cost. It's very vulgar. It's not done in the best families. But with a $1,500 dining room set, you've got to have the best of everything. Now you take napkins. Oh, yeah, napkins. A napkin like you've got here is nice, very nice. We used to have them, too, exactly like these. But since we got the new $6 apiece napkins, we have these for the servants. I tell you, my servants are lucky. I often say to Seymour, a lot of people would be glad to change places with our servants. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I should say not. They eat the same food as we do, the very finest. And look, look, this dress I'm wearing... This is only the second time I've had it on, and tomorrow already I'm giving it to one of my maids. Eighty-nine fifty it costs. 
But what do I care? Well, that's certainly very nice. Yes. What do I care? I have so many dresses that I get up in the morning and I say to Seymour, I just don't know what to put on. And Seymour's always bringing me things. Look, look at this ring. Three and a half carats without a floor in it. Hello, Mrs. Fink. How are you? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bloom. I was just talking to the girl. Yeah, I could hear you in my room. <laughs> I'm glad you came early, Mrs. Singh. Yes, the chauffeur... I heard all about it. He's putting new seat covers on your upholstery. Ain't it fine, Mrs. Fink, to have a car? Do you remember when you used to walk the market with a basket? Yes, but... Uh... I was just thinking while I was dressing. Then your Seymour, his name was Simon then. He had a new job offered him and he didn't have a pair of pants to wear. And Jake loaned him a pair. <laughs> And they was too big. I remember how funny he looked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was certainly lucky he got the job. Do you remember, Mrs. Fink? You lived across the hall from us. You had two rooms and you kept our body. And you didn't have any food to give the body for dinner. So you and I went to the market together. And for seven cents, we bought enough vegetables to make a big stew. And I gave you a piece of meat to put into it. Well, I... Uh, how you do this? They're very fine, thank you. Ain't you lucky. Do you remember how you cried when your oldest daughter failed four times in one grade? And the principal wanted to send her to some kind of a fancy school for backyard children? <laughs> Ain't it wonderful that she turned out all right? But she was... And, uh, your Seymour. He's all right, too? Oh, Seymour is fine. Ain't fine. you the lucky one? Honest, Mrs. Fink, how my heart bled for you when Seymour had his toy bankruptcy and the district attorney called him down to talk with him. Any man not lucky like your Seymour... Might have gotten in the voice kind from trouble. Oh, that was all a big mistake, and... So I, uh, heard you telling the girls about your furniture and how beautiful it was. Oh, I'm so glad, believe that, me. That's very nice. I, I should say it is. Do you remember the time the furniture company took back the furniture and Papa went down and made the payment, huh? Do you remember? Becky. Becky. Yes, Annie. Please don't bring up all those things. I... Listen to me, Annie. You are now a rich woman. Your Seymour's a big businessman. It would be nice if people thought that the money didn't come so sudden, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would. Ah, uh, then don't brag so much, Annie. It's only people who have suddenly got money who keep talking about it all the time. When people have had money for a long time, it's become to them already a habit, and they don't talk about it at all. If you wish to make people believe you're rich, talk poor. <laughs> only a millionaire can afford to run around with patched pants. Mother, do you want us to stay and help you serve the lunch? No, no, no. You girls run along. I will help your mama serve the lunch. Mm -hmm.